So if you go to the byte bit exchange, so we want to go to derivatives. Once we click on derivatives, we have the USDT perpetual. Now, when you are using the USDT perpetual, is because you have USDT in your account because uh, Bybit equally have a USDC contract. So if you are going to be trading in USDC, then you can use the USDC contract option. It means that you have USDC that you'll be using to trade any of this pair. And when you get rewarded, you get rewarded into USDC and all of that. Then they equally have an option called the unified account. When you go and upgrade, you always see that option that says upgrade to a unified account and all of that. If you upgrade to a unified account, Bybit makes all of this, it compresses all of this option into one. So you don't need to go for USDC if you want to trade any USDC pair or go for USDT when you want to trade USDT pair. Okay, but for now, for beginners, I just want you to focus on the USDT perpetual contract, this one. So if we are going to select USDT perpetual contract, it means that we have, we need to have USDT, okay? We need to have USDT to be able to trade on this. So I just go ahead and click on the USDT perpetual contract and it will bring us to this page. Now, when it brings us to this page, this is what you see. This is the interface. Here you have your chart. You can switch between the standard chart, which is the Bybit own chart, to the trading view chart, right? So with the trading view chart embedded into Bybit, you don't need, you don't really need to start going to trading view to do your analysis and come into Bybit to do uh, your trading for a start. But if you have a, a, a premium trading view account, then you can actually leverage on that subscription you've paid because that will give you more features that in, than using the one in the exchange. But I prefer switching to the trading view option because it gave me more room and then you have all of these drawing tools you can add more indicators. If I want to add more indicators, I can go ahead and add more indicators and all of that. Okay. Now on my uh, Bybit trading, um, derivatives trading interface, you see at the top right here that I have copy trading and standard. In your own case, it's going to be standard because you are not a pro trader. Until you apply to become a pro trader, then you can have the option to switch between copy trading and the standard trading option right so once you come in here any of these options you select you want to select the leverage you are going to trade with but once you select btc where you have btc usdt here is where you select the coin you want to trade so if i hover over it i can select any of the coin you do not see here you can go to the search bar and just click okay for instance i want to trade solana you can just click and type solana you see um sold usdt so you want to go ahead and just select the first option that says USDT and that will automatically populate that into your chart. So once it loads up, you can go ahead, you know, and see the statistics. Yeah, we have selected Solana. Now you see the statistics for the past 24 hours. This is the current price. This is the change for the past 24 hours, the high for the past 24 hours, the low. Okay, and then you have the funding rate. Now, because we are trading USDT perpetual, there is a funding rate that is charged every eight hours. So the next funding rate for the Solana pair will come in five hours from now, meaning that if you are there, now the funding rate in um, futures trading is either you are paying, okay, it is between the traders within the exchange. So is it that the long, those who are holding long position are paying to those who are holding short position? Or those who are holding short positions are paying to those who are holding long position that is what funding rate is okay so here you see that funding fee will be exchanged between long and short position holders every eight hours all right so this is automatically handled by by the exchange so as it is written here that please note that the funding rate will fluctuate in real time every eight hours if the funding rate is positive upon settlement long position holders will pay short position holders. So if the funding rate is negative, uh, then short position holders are the ones to pay the long position holders. So once it, this can done finish counting, if it is positive, you know, the long position pay the short, if it is negative, short position. So it is a way you can equally make money. There are a, way, a lot of way people leverage on funding rate and all of that. But the fee here, depending on the volume you're trading, is not that high, so um, you can ignore this. But it equally contributes to what you do uh, 
on a day-to-day -day trade okay then after that down here is where you have the time frame i have all of my time frame lined up here because i decided to do that but if you want your time frame by default you have it at the one minute some time frame if you want all of them to line up this way click on the arrow here so once you click on the arrow you see where it says custom time frame so click on this any of this that you check will show up here for instance if i go ahead and, and uncheck the one month it will when i click on confirm it goes off all right but if i click on it again and click on confirm it comes in, uh, comes up here so i don't need to go back here to start looking for my time frame i can switch between these time frames and if i want to add indicator since we're on the trading view option i can just go to the indicator tab and then add any of this indicator that you know there are a lot of them because it's, it is from trading view there are a lot of indicators there that you can add just type any of the indicator that you might have come across or you have been told to use and you add it up but basically what i have here is two moving averages and then i have the volume indicator and then i have the stochastic rsi indicator i use this a lot all right whether fishers or spot trading i use this rsi um, um, stochastic indicator a lot so if you want to add that you just go ahead and click on indicators and then you can just type in here stochastic okay so once you just type in you see we have the stochastic indicator and then we'll have the stochastic rsi indicator so you just click on it and that will be added to your chart once it's added to your chart i don't do any changes on this uh, for the volume i use it to look at the market to know when there is um, you know a false pullback a false move in the market and all of that and when there is real movement in the market because the volume tells you all of that I'll be making videos on you know how to use the volume indicator and all of that all right so i add all these indicators to my chart now by default when you come in here to the buy bit chart if i go ahead and expand this okay when you come to the buy the chart here the background is not playing you will see those gray uh, boxes okay uh showing up there uh, in the background so if i want to remove that to make it plain background like this i just click on right click on the chart go to setting Okay, here where you see the vertical uh, grid line, I just click on this and make the, the transparency or the opacity zero. And then the same thing happens to the horizontal, I'll make it zero. But if I increase it a bit, all right, you see it showing up on the chart there. And then if I increase this one again, by default, this is what shows up on your chart. But I don't like the grid um, line showing up there. So that's why I make the opacity zero. And then I probably make the opacity for the horizontal grade zero. Okay. And uh, you can do, if you want to change the colors of your candles, you can do all of that here. This is when you come to symbols, any color I change this to, you can do all of that there. But I just like the default uh, green and red candle and then click on OK. That is what you see here. Okay. And uh, if I collapse this thing back, once I collapse it, it brings up the other book. Other books are the activities of the ongoing trade that is currently go, um, ongoing, okay? If you want to see recent trades, okay, the trades that every other person who is trading Solana on Bybit has carried out, you can go to recent trades and you see all of the recent trades, okay? Some are trading 30 Solana, 0 0.1 Solana. You see the exact time at which they are trading. This is the other book of every of the activities that is currently go, ongoing on the pair. Now, if you want to equally know the volume that is traded on this particular pair, okay, the volume that is traded on this particular pair, it should be, if I over over the three dots here, you see, okay, the 24 hours turnover in USDT, all right, you see over $172 million, meaning that um, people are actually um, trading, the higher the volume, whenever you are, you are going to trade any, any crypto, well, the higher the volume for that particular coin, the better for you. Because you can't go and trade a coin. Let's say I go back to BTC. If I go back to BTC, definitely the volume for BTC will be very high. So if I go ahead and click on this, you see over $5 billion, right? five billion dollars traded in btc so the higher the volume for that particular the higher the traded um, volume in the past 24 hours for a particular token okay they had the liquidity for that token that way you will not be you know a victim of um, slippage and all of that if you go and look for a token i don't think you will see any token that is less than a million dollars here let's let even go for the csz um, token here and then let me see the volume traded for the past 24 hours. 
over 10 million dollars. So you cannot see, I think by bid, that is where by bid is having it right. You cannot see a token that is listed for trading here that the volume is very low. If you go to a random exchange where the volume of a particular, most especially those who are interested in trading altcoins, and then the volume of a particular um, coin you want to trade is around 100,000 or even 50,000, and you are putting $10,000 into that. Okay, you are like the the allergy that has come to liberate orders in the market. Immediately you put in your ten thousand dollars. If the exchange even allow your order to execute immediately, you see that the market will immediately push either to the upside or to the downside, depending on what you are doing. So the lower the volume, the more disadvantage you, the trader, is because when you put in much money, at the end of the day, slippage, you'll be caught up with, by, by slippage and you may not be able to sell and get back your money immediately, right? So the volumes are things you want to always look at. Even if somebody is sending you a signal, maybe it's for an altcoin you have not heard of or you don't even know about, once you click on the coin, make sure that you go ahead and look at the volume, all right? Make sure that whatever token you are going to trade, okay, there is a lot of volume. It means that there are other people who are participating in trading that particular token right now if i come back to the standard option which is what um, any other person who is not a pro trader should know then you have the setting icon attached to it so if i click on this setting icon by my right here now when i click on it we have the trade setup and then we have the team setup the team is how you want to look at your chart and all of that but for the trade setup here you have position mode okay the first option we have is position mode if i click on it you see that there are two options there. We have the edge mode and then we have the one-way mode. One-way mode is the one that your account will be by default. When it is one-way mode, it means that for BTC, I can only open either a long position at a time or a short position at a time. But if I want to edge the market, I can go ahead and click on the edge mode. With the edge mode option, I can open both long and short position trade at the same time. All right, I can open both long and short position trade at the same time, meaning that if I open both long and short position at the same time, as it's going down, I'm making money, and then I'm losing on the other position. When it comes up, I'm making money in this other position, and I'm losing on the other one. Uh, but there is a strategy to using edge mode, all right? I just put it on so that if I if need be, if I need to use it, I can use it whenever I want, all right? And then you have the take profit, stop loss preference. You can go ahead and check what you want. Do you want to use take profit and stop losses on the end, entire position or you want to use take profit and stop losses on a selected position, okay? So here on the first one, it says only one take profit and stop loss order is supported for the entire position. A new take profit, and stop loss order will override the previous right then here you have multiple take profit and stop losses right they are supported so you can just select any of these that you want if you want to like the signals i send that i have take profit one two three and then or, or there but if you want to set that and you are not setting you are not able to do it on buy bid it means that your your take profit preference is on the first one if you make it on the second one and click on confirm you should be able to set take profit level one, take profit level two, take profit level three when you have an ongoing trade going on, okay? So with that um, setup, you are good to go. Then we have the general, which, you know, the position leverage and all of that. I don't touch this, but you can go ahead. And if you want to get confirmation before you open a trade, you can just click on the uh, uh pop-up confirmation option and enable all of this when you want to close a trade do you want the confirmation yes just anyone you enable it means that yes you need a confirmation but if you put them off you will not get any confirmation once you just click enter a trade that is it the trade will be triggered immediately okay so those are just the settings that you need to know here then down here after you selected your um, if you want to trade with, you know, either the grid board, the position build and all of that, but we are just doing the manual trade. This one is we trading ourselves. Now here, the next option is where you select your leverage, okay? For beginners, if you don't have an account of, let's say, $10,000 plus, please always use the isolated mode. Now the difference between cross margin and isolated margin is, if I transfer money into my, Fisher's trading account on Bybit. 
let's say I, tra I transfer a thousand dollars into my account and I, I am on the cross margin mode whatsoever position that I'm taking okay I am risking the whole of that one thousand dollars because I am using cross mode let's say for instance I take a trade and I don't put stop loss as the trade keep going against me even if it is only hundred dollar I risk in that trade because I am using cross mode this will continue to eat into my balance until I get liquidated and when I get liquidated I will lose the whole money okay why it has its advantage of letting you stay in the market longer giving you an opportunity to earn more money make more money and all of that the disadvantage is that if anything goes wrong if anything goes wrong you get liquidated and all of that you will lose more than you expected all right so you will lose the whole of your account that's why we always say go with isolated mode on the isolated mode if i transfer a thousand dollars into my account and i go into a trade with just hundred dollars let's say i trade i open a trade for btc with just hundred dollars it is only that hundred dollars i'm risking if anything goes wrong i lose that hundred dollars that will not affect any other trade that i'm opening for let's say i can open two three trade at a time but if it is cross if i open two three trade at a time there is every probability that two of those trades will be going well but it, the other one that is not going well will make me lose every all of the account right so that is the difference between cross and isolated margin so always make sure you are on the isolated margin option then you want to set the leverage that you are going to be using right so i normally leave mine at 10x leverage and uh, 10x leverage is a bit high but just leave it at 10x leverage if you are able to do to plan your trade and then trade your plan you should be able to make get a lot out of this right so we'll go ahead and click on confirm so for short position it will be 10x leverage for long position it will be 10x leverage that's why you see it in red and in green okay this is for long position this is for short position right now if i scroll down here you see the option to open if i want to open a long position here all i just need to do once i want to open a long position is to go ahead and select the other type but before we open do any trading here first you need to transfer money into your futures trading account if you don't have let's say you bought um, a particular you bought usdt using the buy, uh, buy bid p2p or you deposited money from another exchange into the buy bid account it is not automatically on your futures trading some are automated on your futures trading but if it is not on future trading account you want to manually transfer that money into the futures trading account okay so to be able to do that we can either go to our account and transfer the money or within here all right so within here if i scroll down here where it says derivatives account we have the deposit we have the convert and then we have the transfer option so if i go ahead and click on transfer right by default whenever i deposit money into my buy bid account it goes directly to my derivatives account but if it is not on your derivatives account then this is what you can do once you click on transfer you can now transfer from the wallet you have that money let's say i have some usdt on my spot wallet i can go ahead and select from spot to derivatives or from my funding wallet if you buy usdt using uh, buy bid p2p it will be on your funding wallet so from my funding wallet i can transfer it to my derivative account or you can transfer from usdc derivative account to your derivative account okay so just select any of these two and then you want to select the coin you want to transfer in this case it is usdt you can transfer any other coin at all but in this case it's usdc usdt so i just put the amount here or use the all to select all the balance i have there then click on confirm and your funds will be transferred automatically to your uh derivatives account all right then if you want to buy you can go to the buy bid a p2p trading option and uh, where it says um you see um you see where it say buy crypto you can go to the trade um, p2p trading and buy usdt there then you can transfer it here all right now that we've transferred some funds into our account and then we have our leverage set up we are going to either open a long or short position when you look at the market before you open a long or short position is that you might have analyzed the market once you have analyzed the market you know where to put your entry where to enter the market where to put your stop loss where to put your take profit and all of that once you have taken note of all of that this is where you now come in now when you come in do you want to open with a limit order limit order is setting a, a a price of your own where you want the market to be executed 
but people keep getting limit order wrong. One thing I want people to understand about the limit order is that limit order in futures trading, whether it is futures or spot trading, works differently. Uh, when you are using limit order, if I'm going to buy, the price must be below the current price. Okay? If I am going to sell, the price must be above, okay, the current price. Because I am setting a limit that when it gets to this price, I want this to be executed. But if I go ahead and use limit or order, and then I want to buy, I want to open a long position. If I want to open a long position, and I'm going to say, let me set the price to 27000 what the limit order, the exchange will do, they would automatically tell you that instead of you buying when it gets to 27000 you should have bought here at 26000 because 26000 is better than that 27 you have projected. All right? That is why I say limit price has to be below, okay? It has to be below the current market price, right? For, for a long position and then for a short position, the limit price has to be above the current market price. That is how you use limit order. So you just said, uh, if I go ahead and say, okay, I want to buy when, I want to go ahead and long this market when BTC get to 26,000, right? So uh, what do I want to use? What's the quantity of Bitcoin I want to trade? I can use 10% of the balance I have on my account. I can use 20% by just clicking on it on the balance I have on my account. I can use, you know, 50% of the balance I have on my account. Now, as I click on 50%, below here you'll see where it says value, okay? Remember, I only have 11 USDT on my account, okay? But here, I am going to open a position worth $52, all right? Which is the value here. It's going to worth $52. And what it will cost me to open this $52 position is just $5. Out of my $11, it is going to cost me $5. But the position I'm opening is, you know, $52. Meaning that if I make 1%, 2%, 3% of this market, it is going to be calculated based on this $52. Why is it like that? Because I am using leverage, a, re a leverage of 10. So if I say 50% of my account or 100% of my account, because I'm using leverage, it will now multiply whatever the balance of my account is by 10 times. All right, by 10 times. Now, the higher the leverage, the higher the profit you make and... The higher the risk okay that is involved because you can easily get liquidated all right so if i click on 100 percent the next thing is to come into this option where it says buy long we take profit or sell short we take profit so if you are going to open a short position just go ahead and use the um, take profit now but because i'm using limit order and i'm using a price that is below the current market price it means that i'm going to buy long so I want to click on the buy long, we take profit, go ahead and click on that. Uh, where do I want to take my profit when the price increases by 25%, right? When the price increases by 25%, it means that if I enter this market at $26,000, right? For it to get to 25%, it means that the market might have increased from $26,657, right? Where do I want to push my stop loss? I want to put my stop loss when the market goes against me from my entering point by 5%. All right. It means that the market might have gone down to $25,868. And I'm going to be losing $5, okay, 55 cents. All right. And if it goes in my favor, I'm going to make um, $2, right? Okay. So if after setting up this, I just go ahead and click on open long position. And then it gives you the summary. This is the confirmation we saw on that, uh, the setting we did here. Okay, the setting we did here, this is the confirmation. Um, so once I confirm everything, know that, oh, I'm using 10x leverage and all of this, this is where I'll get liquidated. If it goes, if the price goes against me and it gets to $23,000, I'm going to be liquidated and I'll lose my account, all right? But because I put stop loss, I may not get to this liquidation price, right? So I'll go ahead and click on confirm and... Once I confirm, you see my trade has been placed successfully and you see it showing up on the chart. If I uh, expand this. So you see that trade setup that I just did now showing up on the chart. So if this market drops to 26,000, our, you know, uh, uh, trade will be triggered. Okay. Once it is triggered, you will now see the take profit level and the stop loss equally appearing on the chart right now. But here is just our pending trade that is showing up here. 
okay now if i go back to this option this other book here uh because we are very far normally you will see your order showing up here but the orders that are showing up here are above 26 26 there are bad. but once you get close to our own you will see your order showing up here and once it is triggered you will see it okay showing up there then when i scroll down here okay here you see where it says current order all right current order you see that i have on the active order i have btc which is a pending order all right once it triggers you will now come back to position and see it showing up here then you will see take profit level the margin cost and all of that you see it show up here okay i'm not going to enter the trade right now because i don't um btc is currently very confused now i don't know the way the direction whether it to still go down to 25 or not so that is how you get you use limit order if you don't use limit order you use market order market order means it will go in with the available okay the best market price right now so if i click on market order and then click on either long or short it will just take the trade with the current market price okay and then the next order type we have is a conditional uh order type all right the conditional order type just like as the name implies it is a conditional order type now i told you on limit that you need to set for a buy you need to set your price below the current market price and for a sell you need to set the price above the current market price all right you what if you are not there all right what if you are not there you can use conditional order to say okay let's say we are waiting for btc to break a structure somewhere around here so when it breaks the structure whether we are there or not we want to buy from here upward maybe here is a, a resistance and we are expecting that the resistance there will become in support once btc breaks this level so you can now come in here and say okay when btc gets to 25 27000 sorry okay to 27000 i want to buy okay i want to buy when the price retraces by 26 okay 26900 for instance okay you go ahead and then click on open long or, or open short or whatever this will go ahead and create an order a limit order um a conditional order that will be pending the condition can only be met if btc gets to 27000 it means that if it doesn't go to 27000 that condition will not be met okay the same thing applies whether you want to open short or long position that is what the conditional order is so this conditional order now goes against the argument that if i use limit order and i'm buying with price that is above the current market price it automatically buy with the uh, market price for me and all of that but with condition it will just place it until the market gets to this trigger price okay your you know other price will not be triggered then you select the order you want to trade then you go ahead and click on open whether you set your take profit levels and all of that then click on open long or open short all right so this is just a basic walkthrough on how to trade features on the bybit exchange if you have questions you are free you can unmute yourself now and ask your questions and then i can throw more light on that right